It's news time. Information is power. The current. The news headline. Demand for Kano's release difficult. Buhari tells Igbo leaders. The news in full. President Muhammad Buhari has said that the unconditional release of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Hypob, in Amdekano, is a difficult one, but he will consider the demand made by some respected Igbo leaders. According to him, an unconditional release of the leader of the outlawed IPOP currently standing trial runs contrary to the doctrine of separation of powers between the executive and judiciary. The president made the comment while receiving a group under the aegis of highly respected Igbo Grit, led by First Republic Parliamentarian and Minister of Aviation, Chief Mbazuli Ki Amichi at State House Abuja, where he told the 93-year-old Amichi that he had made an extremely difficult demand on him as the leader of this country, and the implication of the request is very serious, saying that in the last six years since he became president, that nobody had actually said that he has confronted or interfered in the works of the judiciary. God has spared you and given you a clear head at this age with a very sharp memory. A lot of people half your age are confused already, but we demand about the demand that he was actually making is heavy. However, President Muhammad Buhari said that he will consider it. Stressing his policy of non-interference with the judiciary, President Muhammad Buhari said that when Kanu jumped bail uh, and was arrested and brought back to the country, that he said that the best thing was to subject him to the system and let him make his case in court instead of giving very negative impression of the country from outside that he feels it is even a favor to give him that opportunity. The president condoled with Chief Amichi, who recently buried his wife, praying that uh, a soul will rest in perfect peace. The non-Nigerian had described the situation in the southeast as painful and pathetic, lamenting that businesses were collapsing and education were crumbling, and there is fear everywhere. He therefore pleaded for a political rather than military solution, requesting that if Kanu was released to him as the only first republic minister still alive, he would no longer say the things he had been saying. Amirichi said he could control Kanu, not because he has anything to do with them, but because he is highly respected in Igbo land today. The elder statesman said, revealed that twice he had interfaced with Kanu in the past, and the high public leader resigned orders earlier given on civil disobedience. I do not want to leave this planet without peace returning to my country. I believe in one big united Nigeria, a force in Africa, Mr. President. I want you to be remembered as a person who saw Nigeria burning but decided to quench the fire, he told President Muhammadu Buhari. Other people who were said to visit uh, President Muhammadu Buhari along with him were Chukwe Meka Ezeife, the former governor of Anambra State, Bishop Sunday Onuoha of the Methodist Church, Chief Godi Umazurike, who happens to be the former president of Igbo sociocultural group Aka Ikenga and Mr. Tagbo Mbazuli Amichi. Meanwhile, Abia State High Court at Umaya has imposed a number of restraints on the security agencies during court sessions. The presiding justice, Ben Sinaya, who announced the restrictions while hearing a suit filed by Kanu against the federal government and seven others, also restrained the agencies from barricading and blocking the access road to the state high court or any court of law unless the head of court so requests in writing. The security agencies are just today, uh, as they did in the past, trooped with the arms and station shelves at all the entry points of the courts and premises, allowed only certified court workers, judges and lawyers and journalists entry into the court premises for the scheduled hearing of Kano suit, and it was alleged that the judge had barred them from entering into the court premises and that the agencies of the uh, DSS are the one to stay off uh, you know, jurisdiction of the court. Many people are recounting their gains and losses in the biggest event that took place in the year 2021. And one of the people who is in dilemma about the losing is the leader of the secessionist, uh, agita uh, secessionist activities in Nigeria. Then, Enamdekanu was championing the balkanization of Nigeria in order to usher in unrealistic state of Biafra. But Sunday Adeyemo, popularly known as Sunday Igbowo, uh, thought it is wise to unlawfully engage the Fulani headsmen who were disrupting the farmer's crop in the southwest. 
Igbo started his mission after it became obvious that he was willing to resist the Etsmen attack while Sunday Igbo was busy disrupting Fulani Etsmen activities in the West. He gained more fans from the Southwest youth who want an end to the elders who are busy killing, miming, raping, kidnapping, and destroying people's property. On different occasions, Igbo confronted the elders in the Western localities. His actions and some of his alleged African magical past made him more notorious and many of his followers believe that it was very untouchable. On different occasions, the Yoruba elders warned him of the consequences of his actions since he was putting laws into his hands. After the news of Igbo's activities went viral, the leader of the agitators in Amdekanu applauded him and it's believed that Kanu's Radio Biafra struggle statement ignited Igbo's secession campaign activities. After Igbo's abandonment of his former mission to the Odudua Republic Nation campaign, he began to hold rallies in different western states and this movement made Kanu admonish him saying that they were getting closer to the unrealistic promised land. After he was able to organize rallies in uh, cities across the West, he plotted the Lagos rally, which was heavily resisted by security agencies. These activities brought about the invasion of his home by the DSS, where a few were whisked away to an unknown destination. This incident brought about the DSS declaring the war wanted for the last time with a heavy man out against the agitator. On different occasions, Igbo confronted the DSS and resisted arrest, but he could not withstand the last arrest alert on him since he was also aware that in Amdekanu, his colleague has also been nabbed by the Nigerian authorities, prompting why he escaped to the Benin Republic trying to, mo uh, the, to move over to Germany. He was arrested by the Benin Republic police and to date, it is obvious that he has been in custody for close to six months. The arrest and detention of the agitator leader has made him suffer on to that ship, including poverty, hunger, health challenges, and discomfort. He had warned his followers to desist from organizing any secession campaign in his name, suggesting that he had resigned from the dangerous mission. It's obvious that he has learned his lessons. We don't venture into a battle that you cannot finish. What awaits any secessionist leader is either exile, imprisonment, or death. Therefore, Igbo would have been with his family members celebrating Christmas if he had not jumped into the ocean of agitation and Earthmen battles that he was not ready to swim in. Today, the battle of the Earthmen has been fought, won legally by governors, and Oduduwa's Republic campaign ended in sorrow. It is a lesson that we should not take laws into our hands no matter what we believe, and this has been the adverse effect of Igbo's agitation, despite the fact that the, it was said that a whole lot of Yoruba elders, leaders, the Oni of Ife, and also Gani of uh, Gani Adam, who are supposed to be the Areo Nokan Kafu of the Southwest Yoruba, of which uh, Sunday ADM also belongs to, that these people had individually called his attention and warned him to desist from uh, issues like this, of which he refused to pay attention and take it to their warnings. And this had actually led him to the situation that he is presently, where he is still at the Belenon.